Good morning. It's good to welcome you uh, this morning as we worship on this Lord's Day. One of the things that I've noticed as we've begun to allow you to sit uh, where you like is that we have begun again to fill up from the back to the front, where for uh, six months or so we were filling up from the front to the back. But uh, it's great to, to see your faces, to have you here uh, as we worship on this Lord's Day. I want to welcome those of you who are worshiping at home. We continue to live stream uh, the 940 and 11 services, so I want to welcome those of you who are worshiping with us at home. This is a communion Sunday, and you should have uh, received as you came in a little uh, communion, prepackaged communion elements. We'll use those later in the service. If you didn't get one of those, please let the ushers know, and they'll be glad to provide those for you. I want to invite you now to stand as you are able, and we'll join together in this morning's call to worship, which is printed in the bulletin, or you can follow along on the screen. <clears throat> Unless God builds our house, the, the house, house is, is built, built in, vain. in vain. Unless Christ binds us together, our, our fellowship, fellowship will never, never be, be a family, family of, of faith. faith. Unless the Spirit blows through our lives, the glory and worship we give to the Holy One is empty and hollow. If you would remain standing as we sing together hymn number 139, Praise to the Lord the Almighty. You can follow along on the screen or there are hymnals in the racks in your pew.
Let us remain standing for this morning's opening prayer. Let us pray together. Mother, Father, God, bind us together as your family. Swing wide the doors of our hearts and the doors of our church that we may welcome the stranger in. Give us a spirit of faith that we may be your temples upon this earth, lovers of your law and givers of your grace. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Hello, I'm Pastor Julia Gonzalez, and I have a few announcements for us this morning. We are seeing some exciting things happening in the church as we go forward. Um, One thing that we can look forward to is kind of a midweek reconnect spiritual renewal moment with the Wednesday Worship on the Lawn and Reconnect Reconnect Picnics. Uh, You can join us on Wednesdays on our lawn or inside in the sanctuary when it's raining like it was this last Wednesday. It was, the sun was shining five minutes before we were about to start at six, but we figured everyone didn't really want to walk out in the mud. But uh, the picnic that was supposed to be this last week has been postponed and rescheduled for this Wednesday, so please join us at six for worship and then the picnics at 625. This is an opportunity for community fellowship and discipleship, a chance to grow and to reconnect with some people that maybe you haven't seen in a while. We also have, looking forward to fellowship, second, social su- second Sunday socials throughout the summer, and this will be an opportunity to gather and reconnect with your St. Mark's family. And I know there are a few people who have been waiting to come back to church until we have donuts and coffee again. Well, well about that. Weather provided, we will be having coffee and a sweet treat outside, not in the church, but outside where we can socially distance and still enjoy that fellowship and communion time together. And those are the second Sunday socials, so please come early or stay late after worship to enjoy that chance to reconnect. I know you want to see each other more than you want to eat any sweet treat. For the children in our ministry, we have many opportunities this summer for growth and for reconnection. Uh, Coming up during the month of June, there is the Club 56 Mission Camp, Children's Ministry Summer Camps. You can find out more at stmarkscarmel.org slash mission camp. We also have June 21st through the 25th, the Kids Puppet and Drama Camps. Uh, You can sign up and learn more information at stmarkscarmel.org slash music camps. VBS is coming up, and we still need a few more volunteers for that. And today marks the first Sunday where here at the 11 o'clock service, we have in-person child care and children's ministry meeting here in the church. So that is exciting. We have several opportunities for spiritual growth this summer with the art and spirituality class that I'm leading on Tuesdays from 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. as a chance to dig into the scripture and to take some time to be creative and imagine for ourselves just what we see when we read the scripture. And Pastor Marianne is also leading a walking as a spiritual practice, not all who wander are lost. Those groups are meeting June 24th, July 29th, and September 20, August 26th. I'm going to get there eventually. And that's at 9.30 a.m. at River Road Park. Each time we'll begin with a devotion, followed by a walk at your own pace, alone or in a group, and no sign-up is required for those walking as a spiritual practice. The Redbird Mission Trip Planning Meeting is today um, in room BC or on Zoom at noon, so just after this service, and it's a chance to help plan for the mission trip to the Appalachian Mountains in Kentucky to build up their rural community and grow spiritually. The trip is planned for October 31st through November 5th, but if you want to be part of the planning or part of the mission trip, you are welcome to gather today, and you can go to stmarkscarmel.org slash signups for more information and for the Zoom link. We have a blood drive coming up on Sunday, June 27th, and we do need volunteers for that. And our mission focus for the month of June is Habitat for Humanity. In Indiana, more than half of Hoosier renters cannot afford a two-bedroom apartment. A two-bedroom apartment. Greater Indy Habitat for Humanity 
seeks to unite the community with people in need to provide the life-changing opportunity to purchase and own simple, quality, affordable homes. Research shows that their home ownership program leads to benefits beyond housing, including improved mental health, a decreased reliance on social services, and improved academic achievement of children. Monetary donations for Habitat may be given online at stmarkscarmel.org slash give, or by using the mission offering envelopes in the back of the sanctuary, remembering that because you give, St. Mark's gives. If you would like to give to other ministries or missions of the church, or to help with the building fund, you can also give at stmarkscarmel.org slash give, or we have baskets at the back of the sanctuary um, near those doors, and you can leave any tithe there if you'd like. We also have a text to give option. And at this time, you are invited to take out your cell phones, whether you are in person or online, and to register your attendance at stmarkscarmel.org slash attend. Uh, this is an opportunity to let us know that you are here and worshiping with us, but it's also an opportunity if you, there is some way that the pastors or that our prayer chain community, if we can be praying for you, please let us know. We want to hold you in our prayers. These are our announcements for this morning, but let us continue now in this time of worship. Would you please pray with me? Holy God, you were there in the beginning. You are there in the music, and you are here in the silence. You are here with us in our rejoicing and in our praise, and you are also there in our tears and in our pain. Lord, there is so much. There is so much joy. There is so much life and so much hope. But Lord, sometimes there is so much pain. There can be so much grief. Through it all, Lord, whatever we are facing, help us to feel the presence of your loving spirit, guiding us and encouraging us. Be with us in death, be with us in our caretaking, be with us in grief, be with us in our joy, be with us in our doubting, be with us and be with our families, that we may know you, that we may seek to understand you better, that we may seek to grow in our faith and be better able to help others to grow in theirs. Because Lord, all good things come from you. And even when something bad happens, you are still the good. You are still the hope. You are still our joy, ever present, ever strong, ever enduring. And when we don't know what to say, when we don't know what to do, your son gave us the words. And so it is as one church, one family, one speak one in the spirit and one in faith, we say the words that your son taught us, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This morning, our first scripture lesson comes from the book of Psalms. You can find it in your pew Bible on, in the Old Testament on page 573. This is Psalm 130. Out of the depths, I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark inequities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. Lord, there is forgiveness with you, so that, that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, 
and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its inequities. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
<laughs> Thank you, Lori and Liz. So, uh, whoever said play some more, I assume that's not uh, a request to defer the sermon a little way. So. <laughs> yeah, right. It is good to be back in person, and uh, we, one of the nice things about being back in person is live music, and uh, Lori, we really appreciate that. That was beautiful. Um, I would uh, like to begin this uh, sermon by reading the scripture from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 13 through uh, the beginning of chapter 5, verse 1. Uh, the Corinthian letters are important for us as we think about the early church because uh, uh, the church in Corinth, Paul started, and then he wrote 1 Corinthians, which we believe is one discrete letter. And then 2 Corinthians is most likely a compilation of several letters that Paul wrote to Corinth. So we kind of get to see a little bit of a progression. And as a matter of fact, Clement of Rome, who was, we believe, the second bishop of Rome, Peter being the first and then Clement being the second, also wrote uh, a couple of letters to the Corinthian church around the turn of the first century. So we get a real sense of, we probably know more about the, the Corinthian church than any other early church. And uh, <clears throat> I will say that if Paul started a church and he wrote you multiple letters, it's usually not a good thing. Uh, <laughs> it means he had some things to tell you. So let us listen to uh, chapter 4, beginning with verse 13 of the second, uh, this collection of letters we call Second Corinthians. But just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with Scripture, I believe and so I spoke. We also believe, and so we speak, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So as uh, we begin thinking about this little pericope in which Paul speaks to the Corinthian church, uh, we think as always about two things. What, what was Paul saying to the people to which this letter was written? And then we have to think, what does this mean for us today as we sort of overhear this conversation 2,000 years after the fact? As Paul begins these uh, two paragraphs that we read, or three, two and a half, uh, Paul begins by saying, just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with Scripture, I believed and so I spoke. We also believe and so we speak. Now, as I was thinking about this phrase, so we also believe and so we speak, I think about what are the alternatives uh, to doing that? And I think if you uh, look at that phrase, the, the other alternatives would be to believe but not to speak, to know some things about uh, God's provision for this world, but to keep silent about those things. And in the book of Acts, beginning in chapter 4, it tells the story of Peter and John. And I think it kind of illustrates uh, this concept. It says in Acts chapter 4, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and realized that they were uneducated and ordinary men, they were amazed and recognized them as companions of Jesus. And this is kind of the town council who's, uh, who's uh, interrogating them. When they saw the man who had been cured standing beside them, they had nothing to say in opposition. So they ordered them to leave the council while they discussed the matter with one another. They said, what will we do with them? For it is obvious to all who live in Jerusalem that a notable sign has been done through them. We cannot deny it. 
But to keep it from spreading further among the people, let us warn them to speak no more to anyone in his name. So they called them and ordered them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered them, whether it is right in God's sight to listen to you rather than God, you must judge. For we cannot keep from speaking about what we have seen and heard. How many of you have had experiences in your life where you just cannot stop talking about it? Where you have experienced something and you just got to tell that story. It's just going to, it's just going to bubble out of you. I have to say, grandparent, I don't need to say more, right? Because there are stories as a parent, grandparent, you know, the teacher, what, anybody who mentors people, that, that you're going to have those stories where, that, that inspire you, that, that, uh, and you just want to share those with other people. It's when we come up to someone and say, I just got to tell you this. I just got to tell you about this. Or it's the big ball game sometimes that we, we just can't uh, keep from sharing. We have those moments when we are so moved and inspired that we just have to share. It bubbles out from us. Now, Peter and John said, uh, as they were interrogated, they said, you know, you can decide what you want to do, but we've experienced this and we can't not say something about it. We have to say something about it. So for them, believing and not sharing was not an option. That was just not something they could do. So when Paul says, I believed and so I spoke, so we believe, so we speak, he is reminding us that, that believing and speaking, believing and sharing the gospel, the good news message, go hand in hand. And to believe and not speak is to not fulfill our mandate that, that Jesus has given us. So when we are silent, in the midst of knowing that we have something to share inspirationally uh, in terms of uh, the gospel message or something we have to share in terms of bringing peace and justice to the world, then we have uh, not fulfilled what God's intent is for us. The other option, though, as I, as I read this, is to uh, not believe and still speak. And so the best example I can have of this is, have you ever ha been in a class or a group where someone is lecturing and about halfway through the lecture you think, I know more about this subject than they do? <laughs> and you think, why are they getting up and talking about this? Because they're, they're talking about something they have or someone who is talking about something about which they have no firsthand experience, and you can just tell the, the disconnect between what they're trying to talk about and what a person who has firsthand experience might share about that. Another story from the book of Acts, chapter 19. God did extraordinary miracles through Paul, it says, so that when the handkerchiefs or aprons that had touched his skin were brought to the sick. Their diseases left them, and the evil spirits came out of them. Then some itinerant exorcists tried to use the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, I adjure you by the Jesus whom Paul proclaims. Seven sons of high priests named Sevia were doing this. But the evil spirit said to them in reply, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? Then the man with the evil spirit leaped on them, mastered them all, and so overpowered them that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. And so in that story, it kind of gives you this uh, indictment of someone who tries to use the name of Jesus and the power of God's spirit, not for the uh, fulfillment of God's mission, but for their own personal gain. As a matter of fact, there's another place in the book of Acts where someone offers money uh, to, to Paul and Barnabas to, to kind of imbue them with God's spirit so that they can make money casting out demons. Those are all examples of not believing but still speaking. In today's world, we would call people like that charlatans, 
or, or uh, hucksters, people who try to take advantage of, of other people using religion as a guise, but not really having the substance of faith. Now, I won't name any names, and, and you, can, you can apply whatever uh, you want to that, but that concept is not new. And even here in the book of Acts, we have examples of it. So Paul said, for us, though, we believe and we share the story of our belief so that other people can be encouraged and so that the grace and peace of God can be spread and be fulfilled. How many of you have ever moved or packed a box? I probably could ask how many of you have not moved or packed a box, and I'm not sure I'd get any hands for that. I have, because I'm a United Methodist pastor, probably moved uh, more, more, time, more than my fair share a uh, number of times. And one of the things that you become keenly aware of when you're moving is that you need to learn about how to pack a box. Because boxes are rated for certain uh, pressures, for a certain amount of, for certain kinds of contents. But one of the things you learn early on in, in packing is that if you're going to stack boxes, you need to make sure the contents of the box kind of fill out the box. Not overfill or underfill, but fill out the box. Because once you tape it closed and you begin to stack things on top of it, it is actually the contents of the box which keeps it uh, from collapsing more than the construction of the box itself. Everybody with me? You know, have experienced that? And as Paul continues this teaching, he basically uses, not that image because they didn't have packing boxes then, but the same kind of concept in saying it is our internal nature that allows us to withstand external pressures. It is what we are filled with that, in a sense, keeps us from collapsing under the weight, W-E-I-G-H-T, of life. And he says, this, this weight, the weights that we carry in this world are nothing to compare to the weight of glory. In other words, if you had a scale and, and the, the, the things that weigh on us in this world and you put them on one side, the, the glory and the benefit of, of God's presence in heaven would, would far outweigh the, the things that we carry, the burdens that we carry in this world. And so he says, if that's true, then we ought to be mindful of how we uh, allow God or invite God to fill us spiritually, because it will be important in terms of how we maintain our balance and our composure uh, in the weight of this world, how we hold up, we bear up uh, within it. Now, I suspect most of us in the past 12 to 14 months uh, would describe this last year plus as a difficult time. Now, that's not to say there haven't been happy occurrences in the, in the last 12 to 15 months, but I would say that probably most of us, when we look back upon uh, this, this last year plus, uh, most of us will say, that was a hard time. That was a difficult time. Uh, it, was, it was difficult to, to navigate through that. Now, for some of us, not only do we have the uh, COVID-19 pandemic that we had to navigate, but we had other losses in our lives, the deaths of loved ones, the loss of jobs or vocations, uh, the, the dismantling of relationships in our lives, because all of those things still happened and in some ways maybe uh, were more difficult to navigate during the last 12 to 15 months than they would have been under normal circumstances. And so when we think about what does it mean to be a witness to Jesus Christ, we think we have to, like Paul, contemplate what does it mean for us to be so filled with the Spirit that we can bear those uh, things that happen in our lives, not just with a sense of uh, getting by and making do, but with a sense of victory, as in the way that Jesus bore his suffering on a cross and then was victorious in the resurrection. And so we come to this moment not just saying, okay, we made it, 
we're back together. We're beginning to uh, be back in some sense of, of normalcy. No, we come to this point also recognizing that we uh, have to be cognizant and aware and participate in the presence of God in a sense of victory more than just a sense of making do. I've lost a, a page of my sermon here, so I'm <laughs> I don't know that I've ever had that happen. It's, it's one of those things I, I wake up in them all night worrying about, but uh, there it is, mixed in with the communion liturgy. I used to, I'll tell you, when I first started preaching, I had a two-point charge, so I would preach at a church out in the country, and then I would come back and preach at the church next door to me, and my, my common nightmare the night before preaching was always that I'd forget my sermon at the church, uh, and back then we didn't have easy photocopies, so I'd write everything out by hand, so I didn't have, anyway, neither here nor there, except for us to say that, uh, you know, as, as, we, as we move through this time of our existence, as we kind of re-engage, or as we're describing it here at St. Mark's, reconnect. We also have to recognize that some of those stresses still come to bear on our lives, and we have to be aware of how God continues to uh, want us to believe, to share, to, to be internally filled so that we can be externally joyful in God. A few years ago, I read several books by a, a writer named Joseph Bailey. Joseph Bailey at that time was the editor of Christianity Today. But for me personally, I, I related to him because uh, Joseph Bailey, uh, over a period of time, had three children who died. And so for me as a bereaved parent, as someone who has children who died, uh, I just found his writing very inspirational to me. And one of the books that he wrote is a book called Psalms of My Life. It's a book of poems, and in that he has a, a book called A Psalm While Packing Boxes, and I kind of want to end with this thought this morning, or packing books. He says this, he says, this cardboard box, Lord, see it says bursting limit 200 pounds per square inch. The box maker knew how much strain the box would take, what weight would crush it. You are wiser than the box maker, maker of my spirit, my mind, my body. Does the box know when the pressure increases close to the limit? No, it knows nothing. But I know when my breaking point is near. And so I pray, maker of my soul, determiner of the pressure within upon me, stop it, lest I be broken, or else change the pressure rating of this fragile container of your grace so that I may bear more. I believe that Paul is trying to tell us that one of the ways that God kind of changes the pressure rating in our lives is in the indwelling of God's Holy Spirit. As we become more and more filled with God's Spirit, it increases our capacity to do what God calls us to do, to be what God calls us to be, to bear the weight of this world in the hope of the weight of glory, as Paul describes it, that to which we look forward, but also that to which we partake even now. And so my prayer as we think about uh, this scripture, as we think about our own lives, as we in a moment take Holy Communion, is that whatever pressures you're feeling today, that you might be encouraged, be reminded that God wants to enter our lives in such a way that we are so filled with God's Spirit that we are then uh, enabled to share God's peace and grace in a world that needs to hear a message of peace and hope. Let us pray. Almighty and holy God, there are times when we feel like we have reached near capacity, where we feel like we have uh, maybe even exceeded the pressure rating on our fragile uh, containers. But you, O oh God, come into our lives. You fill us with your Holy Spirit. You surround us 
with friends and companions to help encourage and support. And sometimes we are those friends and companions to others. We pray, O God, this morning that as we celebrate Holy Communion, as we are reminded of your journey of pain toward the cross, that we might also be reminded of your spiritual victory in the resurrection. So fill us with your spirit that we might bear the weight of this world in the hope of the weight of glory. In Christ's name, amen. This morning, I want to invite you now to take out your uh, prepackaged communion. Someone asked me for the service, when will we go back to uh, sharing bread together? Not quite yet, but like everything else, I know I've said many, many times, this won't be forever. We'll, we'll get back there. But for right now, we're still doing the prepackaged communion. I want to invite you to, to take that out. If you didn't get one when you came in, uh, raise your hand or uh, make a sign, and uh, one of the ushers will be glad to provide that for you. I would like to invite you to turn to page 15 in the hymnal or follow along on the screen as we share in the prayer of great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Yes, it is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream, when nation shall not lift up sword against nation, and neither shall they learn war any more. And so it is with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord. Lord. God of power and and might, heaven heaven and earth earth are full full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. At his ascension, you exalted him to sit and reign with you at your right hand. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, 
All honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. I want to invite you now to take your communion elements. If you have the prepackaged, there's, there's kind of a two seal to this. So you release the top seal and it will uh, give you access to the wafer. And then you open the second seal and it would give you access to the juice. Mm -hmm. This is the body of Christ broken for us. The blood of Christ shed for our sin. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I want to invite you to stand as you're able as we sing hymn number 629, You Satisfy the Hungry Heart.
just go forth with this blessing. Go forth in peace. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen.